morning, everyone. My name is Freeman. I'm one of the OIDCs in Mountain View. Um, and I'm joined here with Kristen, who's also an OIDC in Mountain View. Um, there are probably several other OIDCs who are um, with us today that are going to help us out. So if you have questions um, throughout this training, um, just put them in the, uh, you can either save them. I'll be taking breaks um, in order to answer questions about each of the topics I'm covering today. Um, but if you put them in the chat, our OID, OIDCs should be able to answer some of those for you. Um, so today I'm going to be talking about um, importing navigation, dashboard, and home pages. I wanted to start, um, and for those of you that have been attending these trainings often, I apologize if this is repetitive, but um, I always want to introduce the cohort course that we have because it's such a great resource for all of this. Um, the, the items I'm covering today are largely found in the foundation section. Um, so if you go here, you'll find resources for each of these topics. And I also want to point out that um, we have everything organized in an index for you. So you can look for something specific you want to know more about with regard to Canvas. Um, we've tried to break it down so that you can just um, find the topic that you want to get to and use the index for that reason. So today I'm going to be starting with importing. Um, one of my courses for this. So as far as importing course content into uh, your course, um, what you're going to do is from your home page, um, you're going to go down into settings. And then over here on the right hand side, you'll see the link that says import course content and you'll click on this. And then here, when it says select one, you're going to go to copy a Canvas course. Um, and it's going to seem as if you're copying the entire course, but you'll see in, in a minute that it actually gives you options to choose specific content from the course that you would like to import. Uh, here, you, I'm thinking you have a drop down menu. It's been a while since I've seen it that way, but I think you have a drop down menu where, where you will find your courses. But, um, be choosing any course to pull from. You shouldn't see this long list as I have here, but and so you'll select the course that you want to pull the content from. Um, this button here lets you include completed courses. So if you are dropping down, you're not seeing the course that you've had in uh, previous semesters, you may need to check this box in order for all of them to show up. Now, when you in content here, you can choose either um, all content, which would be importing the entire course um into your current course or you can select specific content to choose from i'll hit this button just because it gives us more options um, and i always when i'm moving content in adjust the events and due dates what i typically do is just remove them that way it doesn't really cause any problems there will be no due dates actually assigned to what it is that you're importing um, and you can go in later and do that it saves confusion for me and i recommend it but um Use either one of these. So once you've made all these selections, you press import, and the import starts to occur. Um, I've I have uh, selected to, or I've opted to select specific content. So over here, this button should um, pop up, which says select content. And if you click on this, it's going to show you all the content that's found in this course. Um, so from each one of these, you can find the specific content that you're looking for and then click the boxes that are next to it and go ahead and import that into your course by selecting content. And that's how you import from a different course. Um, I know that we also wanted to uh, give you resources for importing from exam view since some of you are doing that. Uh, Kristen, did you want to insert a link for this or? I have it right here. So uh, importing from exam view is, is relatively simple. I've never actually done it in my courses, but I've helped other teachers do it. And so what she's giving you um, should uh, walk you through it pretty, uh, pretty simply. And so, but if, of course, if you have questions with that, you can get a hold of it with your OIDC or Kristen and I, and we can help you out with that. Are there any questions about importing content? 
trying to get into her Canvas account. Um, yesterday, I'll hi, this is Laura Call. Um, my daughter's name is Aubriana Higgins. We have been trying to get into her Canvas account. Um, yesterday, all of a sudden, it's just we couldn't. We accidentally walked out, and now we can't get back in it. Um, and so I called um, with the help support line, and they reset her password, and it's still not working. So they referred me over to you guys. Um, and it's just specific to her Canvas account. Um, and uh, we've, we've done it a million times across different devices, and we still can't get in. So we're not sure exactly what's going on, but we can get into her uh, Gmail account through the school. Um, it's just a Canvas. So if you could help me out with that, that's great. Get her work done. Um, my phone number is 602 721. Two three four three, and again, this is for Aubriana. Okay, I'm going to move on. Uh, there are no questions about importing content, so I'll move on to navigation. Um, so, when you're dealing with navigation, you have um, what's called global navigation, and you have course navigation. So global navigation is called this because it it, uh, it impacts all of your Canvas courses. It's basically the main menu that you have um, for Canvas that covers um, all of your courses. And it's found all the way to the left here. And you should see it for the most part, um, like you see on my screen, minus this admin button, but all of these other buttons should be here. I'll go through what each of these are. So on the account button, um, this gives you options in order to um, to change things in your account settings, um, and I'm not going to go through each of these individual individually. But um, when when you're asked to uh, access your account in Global Navigations, this is where you'll find all of these. There's a lot going on here, um, so this is where the account settings are found. And then here is the dashboard button, which looks, it's got this symbol, like a speedometer, like a dashboard. And this is where you'll find um, all of your courses for Canvas. And I'll go more into the dashboard in a little bit, but um, below that is the courses button. And this is where you'll find a list of the current courses you have available to you on your dashboard and beyond that into all courses, which, um, I'll go into that more dashboard as well, but you can find every single course that you've ever had in your Canvas history in courses. And the calendar is found here, which is working. And this basically keeps track of everything for you to see, which um, is different than what the students will see, but this is everything that um, it no is uh, to be notified to you as. Um, as coming up and assigned. And then we have the inbox. And the inbox basically functions um, the same way all email uh, inboxes would. So it's it's got most of the same options. And this is where you can communicate with students. Um, and then we have the button for comments, which is an area where you can go on and search for content. And the help button, which is useful. So if you have an issue um, that appears to be like Canvas misbehaving, then this is when you would use this help button because you need to get a hold of Canvas for a specific issue that regards uh, something their engineers need to speak to. So as far as how to use Canvas and to get help with that, that's what the OIDCs and EdTech are for. But this would be for if there are issues where Canvas is just not working for whatever reason. If you get a hold of an OIDC or or anybody who's who's available to help you, and they tell you to go and um, create a ticket for this, and this is where you will find this option. And then this button just um, uh, expands the global navigation. Now, uh, Jeremy asked if the calendar link works automatically. The calendar link works. Yeah, can you show how the calendar works? So like each of these links. Flip over. Yeah, I think so. Okay. Yeah, you, you can, can like turn around. 
well and how you can turn on and off calendars so oh so yeah, yeah uh, so he's asking here, if his assignments automatically get uploaded and yes they do yes they do so and you can choose which of these you would like what, uh, what you what you would like to see from each one of your courses by clicking on these boxes um and then you can move around in your canvas courses with this calendar from each one of these links And so, yes, it's students, it works for students too. So, and they can access assignments right from those links as well. Yeah. Um, the other type of navigation that I was talking about is course navigation. So this is specific to the type of course that you're using. I have this demo course down here that I'll be using today. So you'll notice on the left here, uh, this navigation menu is what is the course navigation. And so this navigates only within the course that you're dealing with. Um, and it has, it, it will show you every aspect of your course to you. However, you'll notice that there are these uh, eyeballs that are crossed out next to it, which means that these are not visible to students. And I'll show you how to change that in a moment. But um, so these are all of the navigation links that you have available in your course. Um, now, in order to change it, to manipulate what you want students to see and not see, you can go into settings and go to navigation. And you'll find um, these are all the settings that are, or I'm sorry, all the navigation links that are over here that are available to the students. And there's a, you can arrange this. Um, I said to manipulate what students can and can't see and the order in which they see it. So for example, if for whatever reason, I did not want them to see files, which I typically hide that anyway, I don't, um, for my courses, I would just right click on these three, the menu dots over here and click disable. And it will send it down here to where the items are that are not seen by students. You can also, if you wanna hide them from a student, just grab them and drag them into this section. Um, and the same way that I grabbed and dragged them in order to make them unviewable by students, I, you can also grab and drag them and move them, change the order. So if you, see, so I typically have modules after the homepage in most of my courses, so that's where I would uh, have this navigation link. And that's how you set up your course navigation. So are there any questions about any of the navigation or anything that I covered in navigation? Either one of them? I have a question, Freeman. Yeah. Um, I see on that page that there is the like Cisco WebEx um, as one of your items. Is this where students are going to start a meeting that you've scheduled? This is where they will go to find the um, Office hours and meetings that have been scheduled. Yeah, so it'll so have. Everything. I have a tutoring meeting. I have a student that I tutor, and we always have it for Tuesdays and Thursdays at one o'clock. So if I've sent a calendar invite to them, they don't need to go to their MPSAZ Gmail account. They need to go to Canvas and select um, the WebEx down that column. And then once they get in it, they'll see the meeting link. That's only if you set it up through Canvas, which you can't do with an individual student on your end. They could pick an office hour to meet with you and schedule a meeting that way. But if you're setting it up through like WebEx meetings, then they need to just go through the WebEx meetings app or the calendar invite. Okay, thank you. You, you could just share a link with them, right? Get them to the meeting, correct? Yeah, but it, the way it is, you have virtual meetings or you have office hours, and virtual meetings will invite everyone in your class to it, so any kid could hop in to that. Okay. If you set it up through Canvas, so. So, what's your suggestion then? If you have a student that needs to talk to you, and it's like they've They've started sending you emails back and forth, but it needs to become a conversation, not just like a back, like they're not getting what you're saying through the, the message that's just written. 
So you need to have that back and forth that a verbal conversation would have. have how would you suggest to set that up then? You could set up office hours and then they would go in and pick you would you would go in and choose. Um, so what he's showing now, the the boxes with blue around them are what his yeah. office hours are. Um, so you could pick any time all over the place and then they would just go in and pick the time and you would get an email invite telling you that so and so scheduled an appointment with you at nine o'clock on Thursday and. Um, and then they can access it right through Canvas or through that email link. So, and I would set up my office hours in Canvas where we're at right now as well. Yes. Okay, perfect. perfect. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Thanks, Christian. Um, are there any questions about the, what did I get through? Navigation menus? Okay. Um, so yeah. the next. Uh, I, uh, not about navigation, but sort of, I don't know if I should ask this question right now or just wait when the uh, WebEx uh, training you have about this. But also when, why does it, when you set up the, um, you set up either virtual meetings or office hours, where do we go to show it in your Google Calendar? When I said, do these is show up in my? Step? Is there another step that you do to show it in your Google Calendar? I'm not sure this connects to Google Calendar, does it? I, yeah, I, I don't know the answer to that question. Sorry. As far as I can tell from looking at my Google Calendar and this, that I don't think the Google Calendar reflects these times. There, there might be a way to do it. We can look into it, but uh, there's also WebEx trainings um, throughout the week. So uh, the EdTech guys, they know a lot about the WebEx side. Um, hey, so, Kristen. Yeah. I'll post, I have a link to the tutorial for how to use Google Calendar with WebEx. So I'll put that in the chat. Awesome. Thanks, Julie. Yep. Thank you. Um, Okay, so I'll move on to the dashboard. So like I said, the dashboard is found over here in Global Navigation, you can click on that. Um, so as far as the dashboard goes, these are all the courses that you have as, a, as an instructor and that you will have as a student. So if your school has, a, has any school-wide courses um, that you are a student in, you'll see everything here. Um, and that's assuming that you have them starred in order to make them visible to you. Uh, I would imagine you don't have as many as I do, but um, so you do have a lot of control over what you see here, and I'll show you how to do this. Um, to choose the courses that you want to be visible on the dashboard, you can go over to courses and scroll down to click on all courses. And this will show you all of the courses that are available to you, as well as all of your past courses, which are much lower. Um, and they're found under where it says past enrollment. So you'll notice some of these have stars and some of them don't. These are the courses that are visible on my dashboard. So um, I'll just choose one of them, the science department. And sorry, Kristen. But uh, so once I have unstarred that, I will go back to the dashboard and this course will no longer be there. So if there are any courses that you would like visible that you're not seeing, then, and this is also a good tip to give to the students. Uh, so if they're not seeing a certain course, you may need to go check this out. Um, and actually while I'm at it, uh, if you are, as far as the dashboard is concerned, because I see this happen with a lot of students, they ask me about it. There are different views for the dashboard. So if you go over here to these menu dots that are in the in the corner, you can change the way you're viewing your courses. And I'll see a lot of students with uh, this list view who don't want it, but um, are, are unsure how to get back to where you can see all the dashboard cards. And you can click on this in order to make that. Uh, 
make that presentable the way they want to again. Um, now, as far as each one of these courses, you have control over um, quite a few things as far as what you're saying. And I'll use this demo course down here to as an example. So up here, um, these, with these menu options, you can click on them and they will it'll drop down to give you all sorts of options as far as this card's concerned. You'll notice this one, um, I have nicknamed demo, but I can change that by typing the name into the nickname and pushing apply and it will change this nickname. I do wanna point out though that this is, this name that you're giving it is not visible to the students, this is just for you. So as you have your cards organized on your dashboard, it's easy for you to remember where you have certain things. Um, it's especially helpful when you're using your sandboxes because some of you may have many of them. And oftentimes you don't remember which sandbox applies to whatever it is you're doing or which course you may be building in there before you um, import it. So also, if you click on this menu drop down, you can change the color if you'd like. Um, if you get really fancy, you can change the number and the color here to which somebody can share a link in order to find these if you'd like. But um, in order to be very specific about the color you're choosing, and you can also move the card this way. And while you're in this move area, you can actually unfavorite it in order to send it off of the dashboard. Basically take the star away this way. So click apply. Now, I, sh I had showed you that you can move the, these cards um, in this drop down menu, but you can also at any point grab them and drag them and change the position of them as you like. Also, um, you can change the picture that you're seeing here. You'll notice some of these have pictures and some of them don't, and I'll show you how to do that quickly. So if you go into the course and you go down to where the settings are found, go to course details it'll give you the option of choosing an image for the course which is what uh, students will see uh, when they look at the, the card for this course I'll just use this unsplash make sure that uh, you're updating your course details down here And this changes, it'll tell you the changes are, are made. And so when you go back to your dashboard, you will notice that uh, the picture now shows up in the color that you've chosen. So uh, that was a pretty brief overview of the dashboard. Are there any questions about that before we move on? I just wanna say too, you can also put GIFs in there, like the moving pictures, which is kind of fun sometimes. I've never done that. Any tip you have for uh, doing that? No, you just save the the image the same way you save any image, and then you'd pull it in. If you do it the same exact way. Okay. Um. All right. So the last thing I'm going to talk about today are home pages. Um. And I'm trying to think about how I want to approach this. Okay. So. Um, home pages when you're in an individual course, this is the first thing that your students will see when they log into the course. Um, and you'll notice that I have just a, basically entered like a welcome page here and the announcements are on top. And actually I'll do that. Um, I will uh, show you how to get these announcements here first and then I'll move on to actually change the other settings of the course page. So if you do want the announcements to show up um, on your home page, the way I have them here, then what you need to do is go into settings. And when you're in course details, go to the bottom, click more options, and you'll have the option of clicking this box here that will, um, is to select whether or not you want the announcement showing up. And you can choose the number of announcements that you would like um, available to the students when they access your homepage. So that's why you're seeing these announcements here. Now, as far as the homepage is concerned, you have a lot of um, a lot of options as what students can see. And you'll select that by going over here to the right where it says choose a homepage. 
And when you do this, it will uh, show you the options that are available. Right now, mine is on the, um, it's on the front page, which I'll get into in a little bit. Um, but first, I want to show you what these others do. So as a default, when you have your course, Canvas has, it, uh, has the module set up as your home page. So that means when your students uh, go to your home page, they'll be seeing the modules. Well, they'll see the announcements for me, but then they'll see the modules that you have set up. Um, and Canvas does this as the default. So this may be what uh, many of you are noticing, but you can change this. So your other options are to have the course activity stream, which lays out a lot of the uh, recent activity that's found in, uh, in your Canvas course. The announcements, assignments, discussions. Um, it's like a to-do list. Um, there's course modules as I showed. You can um, have the assignment list visible if you'd like. And this gives the list of assignments. Um, I don't typically use this, so I'm not sure how it organizes them, but. Um, You have the option of showing them the syllabus. So if you have your syllabus uploaded into Canvas, they can see this. And then at the end of this, it will actually show them uh, a course summary of assignments. That exist. So you'll notice that when I went in, when we went into this Canvas course originally, I had the uh, I'll change back now. I had the I had a page, I would call it a welcome page. And I'll show you how I did this. Um, and to do that, I'll go back into the demo course that I created, which should be empty at this point. So right now we have the course set up to the course activity, but I want to change it to the front page, which I think I already had one made. What I'll do is delete that. and then go back and uh, I'm not sure if I can delete this. Okay, well, either way, um, if you would like uh, to create a page in order to have as your homepage, then what you need to do first is go into pages and create the page. And I will, um, I'll basically just recreate this one to show you how to do that. So, um, in order to get to all of your pages to see them, because when you go into pages, it will show you your front page and you can click on view all pages and it will show you a list of all of the pages that are available. Um, you'll notice one of them will be identified as the front page. So well, let's say I would like a different page as my welcome page. And I would create a new one. Um, and I might have a little welcome message here, or I could also, um, what I do in courses is I will put links into the homepage. So, and sometimes I change these up depending on what I'm doing. Um, so for example, if I want to just tell them to go to modules or enter the course or something like this, then I can write the text highlight it and add a link to any part of the course. So if my, um, and, and you can link it to any part of the course you'd like with any of these drop downs. So if, if uh, they go to the, to the welcome page and, and I want to give them a button that will take them directly to the modules, um, then I would just go to the course navigation, select modules and I'll click save. And so this will um, give them a link that will take them to the module. So if you just say, and I just like to have a, uh, a welcome page for aesthetic reasons. So if students arrive, then I typically have something for them to click on to go to, uh, go into the modules just to give them a welcome page of some sort. Or what I do is um, on the home page, I'll actually change the links to go directly to something I want them to be working on. So if they have a test one day, and I want them to go directly to this from the homepage. It's just, uh, then I can create a link 
and use my course links over here and send them directly to where I want them to go. And it just sort of streamlines things. Um, this page that I had created in here, um, I actually have it set up. So you can also do this with pictures. So if you insert a picture into it, you can highlight it and link it the same way I did that text that's found in there. Now, in order to make this page your, like the page I just created, in order to make that my uh, home page, the first thing I have to do is go over and make sure that I've selected a front page. So if you have a lot of pages here, you can choose one by going over to these dots found at the right, uh, click, click the drop down menu and select use as front page. And this will become the front page. So at home, when you're choosing your home page, and I click, uh, click the front page, it will show whichever page I have selected in the, uh, in the pages section. Um, I think that's as much as I'm gonna do as far as home pages go. Are there any questions about this? And that's really the last thing that I'm going to cover. So if anybody has any questions about anything um, at all, we'll open it up at this time for you to ask those. Yeah, can, can you go over again to, to see how you can change, put a main image in the course, please? You want me to change the image? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So uh, in pages, um, Yeah, I'd actually, I meant to get rid of this before to just retype the course before we got in here to show you. Um, but so as far as the image is concerned. Um, no, I think she means the image on the dashboard. Oh, the image on the dashboard? Oh, sorry, yeah. Oh, okay, so if you go to your dashboard, I'll go back down to, so in the demo course, if I wanna change this image, I'll go into the course, go down to settings. And then here in course details, um, I will choose an image. So you can choose an image that you have on your computer if you like, or this uh, unsplash here, which is what I was using. I just typed in something and got the images that were available. Um, but you can go into your computer and choose whatever image you like, or or GIF, like uh, like Kristen said. Thank you. So Pamela asked if pages are in each course. Um, Pamela, can you clarify that question? For us. Okay, can you see? I am, um, can you hear? Okay, I chimed in just a little bit late, and so I, I had a problem with my audio, but thank goodness I, I, we got it. So um, my question is, we were doing courses, and then we were doing um, pages. So my question is, Gloria, I think is her name, was asking about the courses. I'm interested in the pages and I want to know where, like, I'm trying to visualize where the pages are. Are pages inside of the courses? Is that what the, or is that when the students first log into Canvas, then that's what they would see is like an overview of the, of what I have um, ready for them. Pages are specific to the courses. Okay, that's what I thought. So every course is going to have its own page. So like, for instance, if I had an ELA um, course, then I might have maybe three pages in that. And then if I had my math, then I would have some, a totally, totally set new set of pages for my math. Is that how pages works? Okay, that's all I needed to know. And so I know there are also courses as to how to do pages, right? Like how to make your pages. Mm -hmm. There are. Yeah. Okay. 
All right. Well, okay, so like yeah, I, from the very beginning, I was talking about our cohort course, which goes over. Um, and actually, I use that just to show. Um, in basics, we have a section on content pages. Just remember that pages are content only, so they're only for students to read or view or to just uh, interact with content. Um, there's no assignment attached to it or quiz or anything. It's they're just for content. It's just informational is all it is. So like you have the syllabus, you had the how you just demonstrated that first page. And so typically there are only what normally typically what three pages for each course. Um, that depends. That on just your depends course. on how you set your course up. Yeah. Like this this course we have for the True. cohort is. Okay. So and actually I'll show you in one of my regular courses because what I've been doing is. Um, what I do for the students is in each one of these, actually, they're both set up really the same way. Is in my modules, I typically have like a page to introduce every week, and each one of these has a video that they can go view that explains to them the expectations of the week. Um, so it it can just depends on the course how much content you put in there and how many pages you'd like to have. It helps to see an example. Okay, yeah, thanks. I see that now. Uh, yeah. I added to the chat a link to uh, the past videos. So this goes to the remote teaching website. And if you scroll all the way down to the bottom, you can see the recorded videos. The uh, Canvas videos are all together in one link. And the there's another one called Canvas Basics, but it doesn't have any clarifiers of what it's talking about. That one we walk through how to set up basic pages, assignments, quizzes, that kind of thing. So actually how to set them up and put content in them. So okay. Well, that's helpful. Uh, anybody else have any questions? Oh, also I put in the uh, if you scroll up just a little bit, I put in the PD credit form, so make sure you fill that out before you leave. And this one is the Canvas Basics, but it has like a clarifier on the end. It's the importing, and then there's a list of a few other things. So, where is that at? <clears throat> it's in the chat. Nobody else has any other questions, and I just want to thank you all for uh, joining us today. Um, yeah. Freeman, would you mind really fast showing? Um, I think Nelson's still here. Uh, they someone asked at the beginning of the course if you could show really quickly just how to import, not import, but like upload a document or something when in when you're in like a page or something like that, and that might help Pamela too with just like how to put content in the course or in a or something how to up, upload yeah how to just put like a document or a powerpoint or something into a page okay um i'll go to all my pages uh it works um i'll go over to edit and so you have all the options up here as far as whatever it is that you'd like to insert um so this will give you all the documents from your computer. So you, this is where you would go to in a, insert slideshows and such. Um, you want me to just do one to? Yeah. Okay. Ooh, I don't know. I'll just put this PDF in. Here, this will work. Um, so I'm just going to insert the PDF here, and I'll click submit. Now the PDF, um, there is. I put that in a terrible spot, but um, if you click options on the PDF, then you can go over here to.
um, automatically open an inline preview, which is useful with students. So that means that when they go to, when they open the page, it should automatically open for them so they can view the document rather than having to click on it to connect to um, uh, the file that's found in Canvas. Back to thinking. And that works, that like options that he showed you works for PowerPoints, Word documents, yeah. uh, any, any kind of document. Tomorrow's training, we're going to show uh, different Canvas apps, and one of them is the Google Drive, so we can show if you have your stuff in Google, there's a different way to embed that, so uh, we can show you that tomorrow. But if it's just like a Word document or a PDF, this is the easiest way to add it. Okay. Thanks. I appreciate that. That was good. And if you have like if you have a lot of files that you like to upload to Canvas, you can always go into the files and put them there first, um, just to get everything into your Canvas before you start uh, creating stuff. And with it. is that easier? Uh, if you have a lot of files to that you know you're going to work with, like you know you have, I don't know, twenty PowerPoints. Yeah, you might want to upload them. So if you do the file upload ahead of time, did you just show this? You you don't click on, you click a little bit different button. You oh. still click that page button, but instead of you would you that page icon, course files. but you do course files instead, <clears throat> or course documents, sorry, if it's already uploaded, or if it's something so you had in, it's a duplicate of something else that you've already done. So, yeah, actually, I should have said that. If you do upload them up, like I said, uh, in mass, then you should be uploaded or finding them this way. You'll notice this is the only thing that I have sitting in this uh, sandbox at this point. And then if you just want, and then the other icons there, like if you want to upload an image, you could do it the same way. So you could either upload it ahead of time and then you would choose course images or you can upload it right here from your computer. Just choose upload image. Kristen? Yeah. Hey, where do we go? I'm so sorry. I, I didn't hear you and you did say where we go for this course document. Where do we find the course completion document? Oh, I can put it in the chat again. So it's at the bottom. Oh, I'm so sorry. I know I told you, you said it and I missed it. I was like, ah. There you go. It should be right at the bottom of the chat now. <laughs> okay. Thank you. <laughs> and then you're going to pick the canvas basics and then it says like importing. Uh, navigation, there's like four things listed. There's two different Canvas basics in there. So. This was importing navigation. Yep. Okay. Any other questions we can help anybody out with while we're here? Excellent job. That's all I got to say. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so we good? Yeah. Okay. I'll leave it open for a second in case anybody's still trying to grab any of those links. <laughs>